and welcome to the Ichigo Abroad podcast. My name's Sophia. Um, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Ichigo Knitter. You can also find me on my blog at dreamingworldsaway.blogspot.com and on YouTube as Ichigo Knitter, both places of which I will put this video. Um, you can also find this video on the Ravelry group, uh, the Ichigo Abroad podcast Ravelry group. Um, please feel free to come over, say hi, and join in the fun. Um, okay, so my weekend. Um, I told you guys last time that this past weekend I was going to Takarazuka. Um, first things first, it was incredible. I'm a fan. I want to go again. <laughs> um, unfortunately, tickets are hard to get. And the easiest way to get your hands on tickets is to actually call and request tickets. Um, but the next performance after the one that I just saw, tickets don't go on sale till the end of this month. Um, and I have have, them, have half a mind to try and get some, but we'll see what happens. Um, they are expensive. But Takarazuka was absolutely incredible. Um, as I said before, the premise of Takarazuka is that it is an all-female uh, performance troupe. Um, the females play both the female and male roles. However, once you join Takarazuka, you either become fully a female actor or a male actor. You do not switch gender roles ever. Um, and before you can even become a Takarazuka, you have to go to the special Takarazuka school and attend two years there, then graduate, then join Takarazuka. Um, and it's a very very competitive. You can't even get into the, you have to audition to get into the Takarazuka school. Um, and my roommate and I have kind of decided we might run away and join Takarazuka. Maybe. <laughs> um, so we all, as a class, um, went to the performance. It was about an hour, maybe an hour and a half away from here. It was a pretty long train ride, um, with quite a few train transfers. Um, the place itself was gorgeous. Um, the performance was actually located in the town of Takarazuka. Now, I'm not sure if the town was named after the fact that the performances happened there, or if Takarazuka itself was named because it originated in the town of Takarazuka. So that I don't know. I probably could have looked it up, but I'm a bit of a derp. So I don't know. Leave that up to the imagination. Um, the theater was gorgeous. It was, oh, it was gorgeous. It was like red carpeted stairs. It was like huge. There were chandeliers. It was, ooh, it was fancy. Um, it was awesome. And the theater was completely packed. It was like stadium, sta stadium seating, but not like just kind of regular stadium seating. It was hardcore, like incline like this. So everyone could see the stage, but if you leaned forward, then the person behind you wouldn't be able to see. Um, so you had to sit straight the entire time because it was literally the stadium. It was like this kind of slope straight down like that. Um, the theater, um, the stage, was mind-blowing. The amount of stuff they had going on on the stage, um, behind the scenes-wise, was incredible. They, um, not, there was the stage, but part of the stage could rotate in a circle, so they could move everything as the piece was happening, so a character could be talking and walking along the moving piece and just kind of go with the scenery, um, they could transition scenery like that. They had um, three trap doors, um, all of which were utilized incredibly. Um, all of the sets were amazing. The costumes were glorious. Um, I'm pretty sure the real Gustav III did not wear um, bedazzled button bands. However, totally worked. <laughs> I think there was only one costume where Gustav III was not covered in sparkles, but I totally approved of all the sparkles. It was awesome. Um, so the costumes were incredible. There were sparkles everywhere. Like, I, you've never seen so many sparkles in one place, and I loved it. It was glorious. Um, the singing was amazing. The top star who played Gustav III, you wouldn't know that that's not her natural pitch range when she was singing. Um... The other male actors, like, you, like, you know logically they're women, but on the stage, it meshes really well as performing as men. It really fit. There, it wasn't, like, weird. There was nothing. It was 
fit meshed really really well um the only telltale sign was that they their voices were pitched kind of for slower like I think they train to be able to constantly keep their voices at that lower pitch um however on the other male star um, male players you could tell just a little bit more that it was being pushed down there whereas with the top star she had her pitch like perfection it was awesome her singing was incredible um it was it was absolutely amazing the entire performance was just it was mind-blowing. I think it was better than any um, any performance I've ever seen on any stage anywhere. I was mind-blown. It was just beautiful, and I was really excited because I could actually pick up what was going on. Like, I was actually sitting there, like, translating some of the stuff that was happening, and I'm like, ha-ha! Ah! Um, so that was great. Um, and just the whole thing was incredible. I mean, I'm a sucker for period pieces, so this was, like the histo history of um, Gustav III of Sweden and kind of the downfall of Sweden. Um, and it was awesome. Oh my gosh, all of the dresses and the suits and the sparkles. Oh, it was wonderful. I, oh, it was wonderful. It was incredible. Um, and then there, after the actual, act, the actual two hour performance happened straight through, no breaks. And then after that, there was like a 20 minute, um, break and then we all came back and sat down again and they did a one hour almost like Las Vegas performance but like way awesomer like there was no like there was rhyme and reason but there wasn't rhyme and reason to what was going on the stage but it was really cool um that's all that matters um <laughs> but they that's what at Takarazuka the first two hours is the actual performance and the last hour is just like crazy musical epicness, feathers everywhere. Like, for all the sparkles there were in the performance of um, Oath of the Midnight Sun about Gustav III, their um, musical review called Phoenix was covered in feathers. Like, I don't know how they walked. Like, the main star, um, Oki Kaname, who played Gustav III, also played the main star. There wasn't really a plot, but she was the phoenix. And came out on stage with a tail feather that was like this big and was just dancing and I was like how are you doing that how is that physically possible it was awesome um absolutely incredible unfortunately I was quite disappointed because um, I mean it makes sense they have the DVDs and CDs of all previous performances of Takaraska but you cannot get the DVD or CD of the current one until it's off the stage obviously but oh I want the music so bad. I want to get the DVD too. I want to see Gustav the Third again. It was so good. Oh my goodness. It it was incredible. But if you are interested, you can get um, DVDs of previous performances of Takarazuka. They are, you know, around $100, which is crazy. But if you really, really, really want to see Takarazuka, you can see the DVD. It was incredible. That's all I can say. If you ever... Or here in Japan, go get Takarazuka tickets and see a Takarazuka performance. It is like once in a lifetime opportunity. Um, the professor that led this trip, I know he does it every year. I don't know if he does it every semester and I'm kind of curious. I want to take one of his classes next semester anyways. But I really want to go see Takarazuka again. So I'm really hoping he does it every semester. <laughs> I might ask him and just be like, hey, Takarazuka. Um... Because, um, I mean, the reason I'm wondering about that is because most students are only here for one semester. Um, there's some of us that are year students, like myself, but most of the kids come here for just a semester. So there's going to be a whole lump of new kids here next semester, which is why I'm like, maybe he does talk Roscoe in the spring, too, because then they get to see it. And I get to see it again. Okay. I think I've rambled a little bit too much about my newfound obsession for talk Rosga. Yay! Um, so that was my Saturday. And then Sunday came. And last week I had been fighting a bit of a cold. Um, and it decided to come back full force this weekend. And I was like, oh, I really wanted a sore throat. By that I mean I didn't. But I got one. Um, and the worst part was, of course, if you haven't known this about me before, a little bit of a procrastinator. And by a little bit, I mean I do stuff the night before. 
So on Monday, I was in a group of four people that had to give an hour-long presentation to our class about gyaru, which um, means gals. It is a subculture in Japan. It's crazy awesome. If you're ever curious, I would suggest looking up gyaru. Um, I don't have anything on me at the moment that would describe what on earth gyaru is, but um, it's a fashion subculture in Japan. Um, the most commonly recognized by people is the, um, the ganguro gyaru, which are gyaru that hardcore tan their skins, um, wear fake nails out to here, wigs out to here, um, but there are many subsets of gyaru. So there are uh, kogyaru, which um, from the 90s and used their scuba uniforms and um, altered them in ways that are specific to gyaru. Um, there's neo gyaru right now, which tends to focus a lot more on American style fashion. Um, there is, as I said, ganguro, which is the tanning gyaru. Um, there's a lot of subsets of gyaru, but the most commonly seen um, in television shows or out there is um, ganguro. So if you're someone that watches, has ever watched anything like that incorporates Japanese pop culture into it, you may have been exposed to gyaru, whether you knew it or not. Um, they actually, showing my nerdy little five-year-old side, um, back in the original Pokemon series, they had um, Team Rocket, the bad guys of Pokemon, dressed up as gyaru. Um, and they had the school grade uniforms and the tan skin and the um, bleach blonde hair. Anyways, um, we had to give this presentation. It was like an hour long and I had to do, my part of it was on the um, cultural side of what gyaru do. Um, and yeah, I was sick, so I had to sit there in my disease state. I become really pathetic when I'm sick. So I was just like, mm, and I was doing this presentation. Um, I got it done though, and we gave the presentation on Monday, and it was really fun because um, for my section of the presentation, I found this group called Black Diamond. They are actually a gyaru group. Um, so they're a group of gyaru of the same subset of gyaru. These gyaru are kuro gyaru which is basically the same thing as ganguro, but they don't really um, use the term ganguro is really from the early 2000s. They refer to themselves now as kuro gyaru, but basically they do the same thing. They uber tan their skin. Um, I read an interview where one of the girls, the most tannest of the Black Diamond members, she goes to a tanning salon twice a day, 45 minutes each, and 45 minutes is the legal limit for tanning, so she has to go to two different tanning salons every day. Um... But the crazy thing about Black Diamond is they're actually also a performance group. Um, so they do attend music venues in Japan and internationally. So I found a music video and all of the Japanese students started dying of laughter because they had a rapper featured in their music video. And he was using a term that hasn't been used in spoken Japanese since the time of like samurai. So they were losing their minds because there, no there was absolutely no reason that he had used that verb. Um, so that was great. Um, that was a lot of fun. Um, I got really into learning about gyaru, doing this presentation. I would never be a gyaru, mind you. I can't wear nails that long. Um, but I'd, I think it'd be really funny to dress up as one one day. That'd be really fun. But um, yeah, so I did that while being sick. I've spent, um, I'm much better now. Like yesterday and today has been um, a world better on the disease spectrum. Sore throat is gone, finally. Um, but I spent the beginning of the week sick, so I didn't actually get a lot of knitting done because I didn't feel like doing anything but, like, sitting and watching, excuse me, watching videos on the computer. Um, oh my gosh, I felt like hiccup thing was going on right now. Um, yeah, so that was, unfortunately, the beginning of my week was very little knitting very much pouting and watching silly youtube videos because silly youtube videos make the world go round and knitting podcast much knitting podcast was watched <laughs> um also this week um japan which i've mentioned before in the summer is crazy mind-blowingly hot and winter like fall doesn't really happen till november yeah um these past couple of days the temperature has literally just out of nowhere dropped it is freezing outside and not only is it freezing but it's windy 
and in Japan, the air is wet, so it is painfully cold. Um, woohoo! Good time for knitting! Um, so I have been, like, huddled in, like, jacket and, like, every form of anything possible these past few days because literally, no warning whatsoever, it has just, like, dropped in temperature. Um, I should have seen it coming, but I didn't. And I walked out one day, I was like, oh, hey, world, how you doing? So that was a shock. <laughs> but that means that I needed gloves. I have really long fingers. Um, doesn't really look like it, but I don't know, camera doesn't seem to, they're long, trust me. Um, yeah, you can see it. Um, so I don't think I have very good circulation in them because they're always extremely cold. So I was finally like, mm, I need some fingerless gloves just so I can keep the hand or the, the heat in here. Because I use my fingers for like, you know, typing, writing, phone, because, you know, 21 year old girl with my phone. Um, so I thought I would maybe make some fingerless gloves to try and maybe keep my fingers warm, question mark. Um, so I've had a skein of, um, skein, yarn for a while now. Um, skein, she is based in Australia. She also has a, um, a podcast, which is the skein podcast. She's wonderful. She's so lovely. Um, my mom and I both watch her and she's awesome. Um, and her yarn is gorgeous. And a few months ago, like right before I came here, actually, um, I won a prize uh, through a KAL that she was running, um, and I won a skein of my choice of skein yarn. And so I chose this color, which is called Inlet. And let me tell you, it, it's coming out very gray on the picture, but there's like little to no gray actually in it. I think where you're seeing gray, imagine a like blue. It's not really gray at all. That's actually crazy weird. Ooh, look at it. It looks like it's silver, but it's not. Wow, I am such a five-year-old. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I chose this color, and she was wonderful enough to wait until I had um, moved here to Japan to send it to me because it wouldn't have really arrived before I moved. Um, so she waited till I was here in Japan, which was so nice of her. And she sent me this gorgeous skein of yarn. And it's been just sitting up here, mocking me, because it's beautiful. But I hadn't found the right project for it. And then I was poking on Ravelry, as I do. And I came across this gorgeous fingerless glove pattern. Um, the pattern is called the Copper Line Gloves by Elizabeth Doherty. Um, they're gorgeous. They're very, um, they're knit very technically. So it's not just a simple knit mitt, there's a lot of stuff you have to do, which for any normal knitter would be fine. But for me, I've mentioned before, I'm kind of a derp. So I read it and I'll just be like, what? So then I need like, I'll be like, mom, what the heck does this mean? And I'll be like literally sitting there messaging her on Facebook and she'll be like, oh, it means this. And I'm like, oh, duh, struggle. <laughs> So, I've been having a fun time with it. However, I've finally gotten past all of my confusion. So I'm on to the part of the glove where I know what I'm doing again. Yay! Um, I suppose I can show you it. Instead of just, like, holding my yarn. Mm -hmm. um, it's super soft, so I'm just like... Um, okay. So. Here. Woo! Crack of the needles. Here is what it looks like so far. Um, this is the cup, so this is... Actually, I can just show you. This is what it looks like so far, and then I get to, you know, actually do the hand. Um, I love it. It's I love the way this is coming out. And then the stitch patterning for the hand itself is absolutely gorgeous. So I cannot wait to start that, like, now. <laughs> And this is what it looks like. This is all I have. Like, actually, I don't even have glove number two. This is glove number one. Um, but I'm really excited with how it's coming out. Um, and I'm so glad I finally found a pattern to use for this yarn. Because I was, like, just waiting for, like, the right pattern to um, show itself to me. 
and that's what I've got. So yeah, I think I'm gonna work on that today because like I said, it's cold outside. Um, and it's, what time is it right now? It's like 2.08 in the afternoon. I don't have class again until 4.40, so I think I'll do some knitting after this. Um, but yeah, so that is actually the only knitting progress I've had. My stuffy is kind of sitting up there. It's been having some adventures because I've been like tossing needles around, like trying to get the right needles for my gloves. So I've been like moving um, half-knitted stuffy hand onto other needles and like running around in craziness. So it's just kind of waiting right now for me to stop being knitting insane. Um, and then I'll get back to that. But for right now, I'm just going to work on the gloves because it's cold. I want them done. Um, so that is actually all that's happened knitting wise. However, I have done other crafting things. Um, the other day I needed to go to the craft store to get size three needles because I didn't have any. Um, and at the craft store, they have a section for like everything and anything physically possible in the world of crafting. One of the things they have is a section for felting. Um, and I've been eyeing the felting for quite a while now. I've never felt it before and I've never really thought about it, but they have really cute felting stuff. And I was like, I could try that. So finally the other day I was like, no, you know what? I'm going to get myself some felting stuff. So I did. I bought this kit to make felting pandas. See, there go the hiccups again. I don't know what's going on today. Um, but it comes with all of the fluff supplies that I would need. However, it did not come with any of, like, the needle or the pokey pokey board. I, I don't know technical terms. Um, so I had to buy that as well. So I got a felting needle kit, as you can see is explained in both English and Japanese for who knows what reason, but it's helpful for me. Um, actually, all of the rest of it is in Japanese. The only thing in English on here is felting needle. <laughs> um, but there's just some of my felting stuff in there. Um, but it came with the stabby stabby needles and the foam, etc. Um, it also came with a cute little book for beginners like moi. Cute little book. Um, and it's absolutely precious inside. It's got lots of, it's got lots of different felting patterns for you to try different felting thingies. Oh my gosh, these are adorable. Look at these. Oh, I want the squirrel. So cute. I'm such a sucker for animals. They're just too precious. I can't handle it. Um, yeah, so it's a great book. Um, the only problem is it's all in Japanese, and I don't know Japanese technical terms for felting. Um, yeah. So that makes life interesting, but keeps me busy. So I, last night, while accidentally stabbing myself quite a few times, um, made a panda. And this is the madness that resulted. Ooh. He has a little tail. It's got little pink ears and its eyes and nose. Now, the only thing about this little guy is his eyes and nose, they don't really stay. Like, if I, like, moved him much, they would pop out. And in the instructions, um, it's in Japanese, but it was actually pretty simple stuff. There wasn't, in the actual instructions for this little guy, there wasn't much, like, felting instructions. It was kind of more like, um, use this fluff here, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there wasn't any mention of actually how to get the eyes and nose to stay. I don't know if I missed something. Um, I might need glue. They're staying on pretty good right now, but, um, regardless of my language adventures, this was so much fun. It was so cute. Um, my roommate was videotaping me, like, stabbing it while I was going at it, because, um, again, I don't have the proper stabbing techniques for felting, but I'm really excited with it. Um, and the pattern, or the the kit I got comes with fluff to make a matching one with like black eyes and black ears. So he'll be like a regular panda and this one will be the crazy pink panda. I wanted to make the crazy pink panda first. So yeah, that was really fun. I've never felted before. Um, I watched like a YouTube video on how to felt a pumpkin to get an idea for what I was supposed to be doing. And then I like, read the Japanese instructions and 
just kind of jumped right into it. Woohoo! So it doesn't look fully like the. See, that's what it, it should look all nice and perfect. And instead, it's like, tee hee! Woohoo! But I had a lot of fun with it. So I'm excited with this little guy. So cute. It's kind of crazy. I, you know, how um, with felting, what you're doing is you're kind of pushing with the needle, you're pushing in the individual fibers because they get caught and pushed in and that makes it um stick together like this and I was doing it and my roommate was just like what are you doing <laughs> I'm just like stabbing fluff and she's like what I was like yeah it, it it's doing something really <laughs> um but I'm really excited with this I've never done this before so that was my new crafting adventure of the week yay um so that's about all on the um, crafting Sophia's life of weird adventures spectrum. Um, things are starting to get crazy again. Um, I'm actually, I can't really believe it, but I'm coming to the end of the semester. I have about four weeks left before the semester is over. Um, and that includes finals. So I have a paper due next week paper due in a couple weeks that I think is supposed to be a big term paper but <laughs> oops um I think not this coming weekend but next weekend I'm going to Universal Studios Japan with my roommate and her Japanese speaking partner and her speaking partner's friend um both of which are totally awesome so we are going to go with them to Universal Studios Japan in Osaka which I'm really excited about because they have a magical world of Harry Potter there. I kind of love Harry Potter a little bit too much. Yay! Um, so that's happening. Um, other than that, it's just going to be a lot of exams. Um, Got to figure out the situation with winter break because as an extension student, I get to stay in my dorm over winter break, but it was like, yeah, you have to check in on, like, the 25th, but, like, checkout's on the 19th, and you have to completely clean your rooms out, and I'm like, so where's my stuff gonna, like, do I just have to move all my stuff and then move it back in a few days later? Like, it doesn't really make sense. However, um, uh, my mother, yay, is coming on the 19th, which I am so excited about that, um, the 19th of December, not November. And she's going to be spending three weeks here with me. We got an apartment through Airbnb in the area. And it's going to be awesome. Um, so I won't actually be staying in my dorm. But, you know, I need to keep all of my stuff here. Because you have no concept of... Actually, I suppose I can show you. Are you guys ready for this? I... Da, da, da. Look at how much stuff I have. Yes. Yeah, I have collected a lot of junk. I mean, it's collectible junk, but I need somewhere to put it um, for those three weeks. But that's what's coming up. I think Thanksgiving is next week, right? I don't really know. It's kind of weird that I'm not going to be home for Thanksgiving, but my friends that I hear are planning on making a turkey out of peanut butter and chocolate. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> Seems logical, right? That's definitely a good replacement for Thanksgiving turkey. Um, so holidays are coming. School's coming to an end, which is really weird. I can't believe the semester's gone by so fast, and it's it's going to be hard because all most of my friends are going back. My roommate slash glorious bestie is going back to our school um, because she's graduating in the spring, so I'm gonna, it's going to be really weird because she's going to be messaging me from my college back home, and I'm going to be like, why aren't you here? Um, and a lot of my other friends are going back um, a couple of them are staying for the whole year, like myself, but most aren't. And so it's going to be a whole new crew of kids coming in in the end of January. Um, my winter break actually goes till February 1st, which is a really long time. So that should be good travel adventure time. But at the same time, it's just going to be really crazy to um, kind of start over again, really, which should be interesting. Although I'll already know the professors, which will be funny. I'll just be like, hey, I didn't leave. Yay. Um... So yeah, that's about it in my life right now. Um, I'm probably going to go knit now, because why work on those major papers? <laughs> um, so, I hope you all have a wonderful week, and fantastic knitting! Bye!